This episode of Because Science is brought to you by Just Cause 4. Get ready to bring the thunder with Just Cause 4, available now. How does Aquaman survive underwater? Orin, Arthur Curry, no matter what you want to call him, Aquaman is the undisputed king of the seven seas. He can swim faster than anything with fins. He has a killer trident that isn't always a trident because it has more than three points. He can even communicate with sea life. Hello? No, yeah, busy. We talked about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, see ya. All the groupers say hi, by the way. But all these amazing properties aren't even the most interesting thing about Aquaman, because if a humanoid really wanted to swim beneath the waves and survive, they'd have to change almost entirely. <laughs> all right. All incarnations of Aquaman, including the latest featuring sentient throwing axe Jason Momoa, portray the character as perfectly adapted to life underwater. Atlanteans like Curry can swim and breathe and fight anywhere in the ocean just fine. The incredible thing about Aquaman, though, at least according to current canon, is that he is half human. That means he must at least have some human physiology, and if he's at all human, that means his Atlantean genetics have bestowed a tidal wave of traits that makes life submerged possible. Before we start, I'd like to point out a few things. Much of this nerdy analysis was spearheaded by Dr. Andrew David Thaller. He is a deep sea ecologist and author. His extensive knowledge of both Aquaman and what it takes to survive underwater is extremely helpful for us. And for this analysis, we are gonna ignore the more simple aqua obstacles like breathing underwater, Aquaman has gills, for the more difficult ones that the ocean would present to a humanoid. These bigger problems will be ocean osmosis, body heat, and nitrogen gas. But let's begin with body heat. First, we could classify Aquaman as a marine mammal, like a whale or a seal. Except that Aquaman doesn't have any of the outward adaptations that allow these creatures to live in the extremely cold ocean. Swimming in the ocean is obviously tolerable for humanoids, we do it all the time, but we can't go much deeper than the surface level of the ocean without protection. That's because even the surface level of the ocean is a full 10 degrees below human core body temperature. And as you can see, with this graph of temperature versus ocean depth, there is a point at which this temperature drops dramatically. This is the thermocline. As you can see from the thermocline, only a thin layer of the world's oceans is tolerable for us. A full 90% of ocean water is at or below three degrees Celsius, 37 degrees Fahrenheit. It goes all the way down to zero at depth and below zero at the poles. Most of the ocean is absolutely freezing, and that's the problem. Aquaman is jacked My man. and basically hairless, okay. which means he has very little in the way of fat and or fur. Fat and fur is what keeps marine mammals from freezing to death. Some marine mammals can have a body fat percentage up to half their total body mass. What is the body fat percentage of Aquaman? Two? When you're standing around in air, you're not losing heat that quickly, but when submerged in water, you're losing heat two dozen times quicker. So to avoid constant hypothermia, Aquaman would at the very least have to be chonky or covered in a very thick and insulating layer of fur. Given that he is neither, maybe he's using a more sophisticated solution. In the bodies of some very athletic fish like tuna, like tuna, like tuna. Yeah, right now. Yeah, just like we practiced. All right, great. In the bodies of some very athletic fish like tuna, there is a fascinating and complicated system of veins in arteries. It's set up in a countercurrent heat exchange. So blood coming in from the core of the fish is warmer, and by the time it gets to the outside, it is colder. But because the veins and arteries are so close together, they're actually exchanging heat as they pass by each other, which keeps the outside of the fish colder, but the the inside of the
of the fish warmer. And this helps warm the internal organs, keep them functioning and keep all those muscles that this very athletic fish needs functioning at peak condition. If Aquaman is swimming through zero to three degree temperature ocean most of his life, he at least needs something like this if he's not chunky or covered in fur. The temperature of the water wouldn't be Aquaman's only obstacle. The water itself is a problem. A human is basically a bag of water with stuff dissolved in it, like salts, ions, electrolytes, that kind of thing, and it's separated from the rest of the world's water by an easily damaged barrier. When we lose water in air through respiration, sweating, or urination, we then have to replace our water with stuff of a similar concentration. However, under the sea, your body would be suddenly surrounded by water with a very different concentration. Submerged in seawater, the water in our human bag would be compelled by what is called osmosis to start flowing out of us. Osmosis is the spontaneous movement of stuff towards stuff with a higher concentration of things dissolved in it. Under the ocean, our less salty body water is forced by chemistry to flow out of our bodies and into the ocean. And so a more realistic Aquaman, if he spent hours, days, or years underneath the waves, would start to shrivel up until his cells got smaller and his vital organs failed. I can't dig it. Oh, I am freezing right now. Of course, marine mammals exist, so nature has figured out a solution to this problem. Mammals like seals and dolphins can only regain the water that they lose to their environment from two places. Either their prey, which can have varying levels of salt, electrolytes, and water in them, or seawater. Marine mammals lack sweat glands, and so any water that they are trying to take back from the environment has to eventually go through their kidneys. Now, unlike our kidneys, which filter out waste and concentrate our urine, which only has one lobe per kidney, marine mammals evolved kidneys that have up to thousands of lobes. This helps them deal with the high volume of salts and electrolytes and water that they are getting from their prey or from drinking seawater. This evolution, and this organ allows them to regain water back from the environment. I, I made a whale do a belly flop so you could see that. It's a cool power! You can do a fairly simple calculation to see the big difference between a marine mammal's kidney and our own. Imagine that a whale and a human both drank a thousand milliliters of seawater. This is the concentration of salt in seawater, and this is the concentrating capacity of each of the animal's organs. Do the math, and you find that the whale produces less urine in liquid volume than it's taking in, and the human produces more, which means that the whale is gaining water in this exchange, and the human is losing water. This is exactly why you can't drink seawater, your kidneys. No matter how much liquid seawater you ingest, you will always be losing water and dehydrating yourself, leading to death. So if Aquaman wanted to survive living in the ocean and moving around as much as he does, then he would need specialized cell structures and some Atlantean kidney if he didn't want to shrivel up and die like the second week box office of Batman v Superman. <laughs> My man. If Aquaman wanted to protect all oceans at all depths, he'd have to change substantially to work around maybe the scariest obstacle to living and moving underwater. Even if you aren't a diver, you've probably heard of what scares many divers the most, the bends. Here at ground level, just from the weight of the air above you, you are experiencing one atmosphere of pressure, about 14.7 pounds pressing on every square inch of your body. Water, though, is much heavier than air. For every 10 meters of water you descend through, it increases the pressure by a full atmosphere. Dive just 100 feet or 30 meters below the waves, and your body, and more importantly, your chest, will be experiencing four atmospheres worth of pressure. At this pressure, it is physically impossible to inflate your lungs against the surrounding water. That is why divers use pressurized air that matches the four atmospheres of water pressure to expand their lungs. Using this basic fluid physics, divers today can spend many hours underwater. 
The only problem, though, is rising too quickly. What happens when you crack a cold one? Oh, thank you. The sound that you hear is the gas escaping from the liquid that it was dissolved in. Sodas are usually fizzified by putting some high pressure gas inside of a liquid and then sealing it. Ooh. <laughs> inside the can and sealed, that gas comes to an equilibrium inside of the can with the liquid, which dissolves the maximum amount of gas in that liquid for the temperature and pressure. And when you open the can, you change that pressurized environment and therefore you decrease the amount of gas that this liquid can hold. Sciency. How ambient pressure determines the amount of gas dissolved in a liquid is why you can open up a soda can in a pressurized environment and not an open air environment, and it won't make a sound at all. Here, watch Commander Chris Hadfield do it under two atmospheres of pressure in a submersible. Pretty cool, right? Now this big difference in pressure and what it does to gases and liquids is the problem that Aquaman would have to contend with. Hip. Because a diver underneath the ocean has to breathe pressurized gas, just like the soda can, more gas than would otherwise from their tank starts to dissolve into their blood. If they were to then rise too quickly to the ocean's surface, bubbles from gases like nitrogen would start to come out of their blood, like cracking a cold one. Okay. And bubbles in the blood is the bends, and it can be extremely dangerous. Bubbles in the blood can cause everything from fatigue and headaches to seizures and death. The problem is that Aquaman rapidly surfaces all the time, realistically speaking, fast enough for the bends to kill him many times over. Thankfully, Dr. Thaler has a suggestion, a swim bladder. In marine animals, swim bladders evolved to use chemistry to pump gases out of the bloodstream and fill a flexible organ that helps those organisms with buoyancy and stability. If Aquaman had a swim bladder from his Atlantean heritage, maybe it could rapidly pump out potentially dangerous gases from his bloodstream, and then he could ascend and descend as quickly as he wanted all the time. Of course, all that gas would still have to escape to the environment somehow, but at least, but at least, at, whatever, you get it. My man. So, how could a more realistic Aquaman really survive under the sea? Well, to cope with all of the challenges that evolution took millions of years to figure out for other marine mammals, Arthur Curry would need some sort of swim bladder to help him cope with the bends as he patrolled the seven seas. He would need a system of countercurrent heat exchangers in his body to keep that rip bod right. so hot. And he would need a kidney or kidneys that let him excrete like a whale. If he didn't have any of these adaptations, he'd end up a frozen, bubble-ridden, shriveled mess. And I am pretty sure that is something that Arthur Curry can't dig. Because, be Hello? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, it's the king of all shrimp. Yeah, yeah, no. Tonight, your place. Okay, don't need to yell, we talked about that. Oh, yeah, because science. What really fascinates me about evolution is that although it comes up with solutions to problems that organisms have, it doesn't come up with the perfect answer, just what works. For example, marine mammals like whales have to ascend and descend all the time, and so they would also deal with the dangers of the bends. Uh, but whales have not perfectly solved that. They deposit the gases not in a swim bladder, but into their bones, which kills their bones. When you do an autopsy in a whale, you can find these bulbous formations on their bones, look like where the bone was trying to repair itself and some of the bone cells were dying, and, but that's its solution, to put the gas in its bones to make a brittle, fragile skeleton. So it works, but it doesn't perfectly work. And I, it's so much more uh, realistic and uh, representative of how nature works. So, Aquaman could have a swim bladder. 
Available right now, Just Cause 4 sees rogue hero Rico Rodriguez journey to Solace, a huge South American island full of conflict, oppression, and extreme weather conditions to hunt down the truth about his past and defeat high-tech private military organization, The Black Hand. Strap into your wingsuit, equip your fully customizable grappling hook, and get ready to bring the thunder like never before. Thank you so much for watching, Tina, and thanks again to Dr. Andrew David Thaller's work for its help on this episode. You should follow him on Twitter and go to his website, Southern Fried Science. If you want more of me, head over to Alpha, where you can get this show two days earlier than anyone else by going to projectalpha.com, and you can get discounts on merch and other premium content and cool stuff. Also, follow me and Because Science on Twitter and Instagram and social media everywhere here, where you can suggest ideas for future episodes to me, and sometimes I will use them Oh, that's right. Bye.